everybody. It is Patrick McLean, one of your guest hosts for Reimagine 2020. As you know, we're on the fourth event. Uh, we're doing one every month for the rest of the year uh, and really having amazing conversations. So again, I, I, I'm rocking the Mario hat. You guys are watching this on Halloween. This is what I'm embodying today. Um, but before I butcher this anymore, I know if you know anything about crypto, you definitely know this guy. Maybe you don't know this guy and we'll kind of get to that a little bit. But Justin, how's your day? What's been the highlight of your week? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty good. Uh, our team is busy in launching uh, just link, uh, the chain link Oracle on Tron blockchain. Uh, recently, that's something uh, we have been working on for quite a long time. Uh, we are so excited. Uh, we have the chance to uh, officially uh, launch it uh, this week. 100%. And I want to kind of get to that, right? Because I, I think one of the things that really intrigues me about what, what you do and what Tron does is just like the rapid pace in which you guys put out products, right? Um, so I want to kind of drill down into that. But, you know, if you don't mind, I, I'd like the audience to kind of understand you a little bit. And I want to go, let's go back as far as you want to take me. You know, I, I, I did a little more research on you this week. I know a little bit about you and kind of preparing to interview you, right? So I see you've like had previous tech companies. Like I'm a tech nerd. So like, are you a tech nerd? Has that always defined your life? And like, how, how did you know that? Can you kind of like take me through your evolution of how you kind of landed on, on blockchain? Yeah, sure, definitely. So uh, I born in 1990 uh, in China, uh, on Qinghai province. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, small uh, uh, village in, in China. And then I went to uh, um, Peking University uh, for uh, for my bachelor degree, uh, and then I, I applied visa uh, for United States, and I got a master uh, degree uh, from University of Pennsylvania. And uh, during my time in UPenn, uh, I got interested uh, in the blockchain. That was the time uh, 2012. Uh, so, uh, so basically, uh, at that time, Bitcoin price. Uh, it's only around like $1, $2, something like that. So uh, uh, I remember the time even the Bitcoin price skyrocketed to $13 and got lots of people excited about like the potential of the Bitcoin. So at that time, uh, uh, I get into the blockchain industry. At that time, we don't even have the word uh, blockchain. So we people more is talking about a Bitcoin, because at that time, Bitcoin was the only currency here. It's not like today, right? We, we got like over like 10,000 currencies today. At the time, there is only Bitcoin. And then uh, uh, end of 2011, early 2012, we have Litecoin. And then late, late 2012, we got uh, Ripple. So I joined uh, Ripple in 2013. Uh, started to really uh, uh, kind of like explore uh, the possibility of the cryptocurrency here. And that, that's how I get to the crypto uh, even before I graduate from UPenn. So um, this is like the eighth year uh, I have been in crypto. Uh, and I, I cherish this opportunity. You know, I, I believe these opportunities for our uh, generation uh, is definitely uh, one of the best opportunity for uh, the millennial uh, uh, people. And so that's why uh, uh, I have been like working uh, very hard, uh, try to catch uh, all the opportunity we have in the industry and always push uh, our industry move forward. Uh, it's very exciting early this year, around like January, I, I have lunch with Warren Buffett and to update him uh, a lot about our industry uh, growth. And, uh, uh, you know, like Warren Buffett buy lots of the stock uh, in airline, right? So uh, I wish he, uh, he should listen to me, <laughs> sell all the he, airlines. He would, industry and he buy would, Bitcoin. Right? You Bitcoin would, you is would, like 50% this year. You would have made him some money. I, okay, yeah. so like, there, I, I want to go back on a few things, but this one I can't ignore. But like, tell me about that lunch. Like, when I saw it, I thought it was genius, right? Yeah. I'm like, okay, you have this guy who's just like, Bitcoin is rat poisoning or whatever the hell he says. And clearly, there's like a bunch of other people that like, kind of think they see something. So how could yeah. you have this bigger divide? And, I, and like, when I thought it's like, okay, maybe it's, 
maybe he's listening to the wrong people. Is that kind of, is that kind of how you approached it? And what was like different from what you thought was going to happen at that lunch versus what happened? Yeah, exactly. Sure. First of all, I believe like, as you say, like Warren Buffett for Bitcoin, just for Bitcoin on uh, this uh, one like topic, I believe Warren Buffett is listening to the wrong people because like all the people around him, uh, it's very conservative, uh, traditional investor. Uh, so they uh, only like look at those like uh, uh, industry have been like uh, hundreds of years, right? For example, like Coca-Cola is already like, I checked, this year is like 128 years anniversary of Coca-Cola. You know, like, uh, Coca-Cola is a very long standing brand here. And also like all the airlines uh, and, and also all the banks like Wells Fargo. You can see like all the industry Warren Buffett has been uh, invest, like heavy invest in is those like industry have been hundreds of years, you know. Uh, so that's why Bitcoin is only last, uh, um, this year is, uh, 10 year anniversary for Bitcoin. Uh, it's very short period of time compared to all the company Warren Buffett have been invested in. So that's why uh, I believe Warren Buffett listen to the wrong people. They don't understand Bitcoin. Uh, they, they don't know like the updates in this industry. They don't know like why those people uh, uh, is excited about Bitcoin and the, what those people is working for. So that's why I believe uh, this lunch is a, a best opportunity for just as you said, like everybody know about Bitcoin, right? I say like, like all the, like Charlie Lee, me, like all the uh, exchange founders, uh, Binance, Huobi, uh, eToro, uh, and, and everybody. So sit down with Warren Buffett uh, to really talk about like the updates of all the cryptocurrency. And on the other hand, I think this is also uh, a big uh, uh, events for the traditional investor as well. Uh, I don't know if really because of this lunch, but you can find out uh, this year, uh, the Bitcoin price goes up to 90%. It's not like because of the retail customer, it's driving the increase of the Bitcoin. Uh, it's real, it's, it's institution. You know, you, you see a new, a tons of the money is buying from Grayscale. Uh, all, all this, this is a uh, Wall Street like international money, and also on the other hand, you you can see like Coinbase custody and all the like big gold right acquired by PayPal or try to um um acquired by PayPal and PayPal also opened the uh, uh um purchase of cryptocurrency. So that's why I believe like 2020 is a year uh, marks like the the beginning of the institution investors. So that's definitely I think. Early this year, having lunch with Warren Buffett is also one of the milestones we have been achieved uh, to attract more um, uh, traditional investors into our industry. I, I think you're right. Like when I look at it, like if I were to pick one article, because you guys did this what at the beginning of the year, right? Like December, January, something like that. Exactly. Uh, uh, if I look back, like obviously it was all bad news after May, basically. Yeah. Like. But if I actually look back at the premier, if I were to take like Buffett and crypto, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you probably had the biggest spur. And, and I think sometimes the space needs good PR, right? There's no, there's no not, not, for a lot of these protocols, there's no company behind it. But I want to, let's get back to, back to that. But I want to focus just a little more, if you don't mind, on your story. So you, you figure out Bitcoin. I heard you say like you got into Ripple, Ethereum a little bit. Can you kind of tell me, well, I guess two parts. Did you have any experience in technology companies before that? And did that help you as you approach this? And then the second part is what was like your first job in crypto? Like your first, was it, I don't know if it was creating Tron or like, uh, but can you just you kind of that. fill out that? Yeah, before I uh, even like know about crypto, I, I'm just like student in uh, study in university, but right. But uh, at early, Days, I, I'm kind of like interested in like the technology of Tesla. So at that time, Tesla is also around like 20 bucks or something. Uh, I get interested in uh, uh, Tesla and then I invest uh, lots of money in, in Tesla. So that's also uh, um, uh, get me like into more, more like this kind of the technology uh, and also uh, um, uh, um, because before that, I was like trying to apply for law school, right? Try to be a lawyer. So 
So that's why I think this is kind of also changed my life. So I, I start to more into like technology perspective. So, so that's why when I, my friend told me about Bitcoin, they told me like, you definitely need to check this out, you know? So I definitely like, like, like uh, very into Bitcoin. So that's how I get to uh, uh, the Bitcoin, uh, 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 like beginning of the story. And my first job uh, in, uh, uh, in crypto is in Ripple. So at that time I, I joined uh, Ripple in 2013. At that time, like Ripple is like very small company. And also at that time, there's no like a lot of tokens even in our industry. Uh, as we can remember at that time is Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ripple, uh, uh, and, and also uh, uh, like a prime coin, uh, like-, like what, what, uh, what can I ask? What was your job? What was your job at Ripple? Like, what did you do there? Oh, uh, I helped Ripple to, uh, um, to build their like company, like all the structure and also promote like Ripple uh, uh, in, in the great China area. Got it. So is that, when you look at that, was that like you helped Ripple and obviously Ripple is a very big company, right? So maybe you helped them a bit. Yeah. Uh, is that something like, I like, translate that like a little farther, like, well, sorry, I, I guess I don't want to stop, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you. I apologize. So yeah. you're working at Ripple and then what's the next part? Like, how does that go? Oh, so first of all, we work in Ripple and then uh, uh, we, we help Ripple to build a business relationship in China. Uh, I think at that time it's a very tough like situation. Uh, you know, even like crypto got some like attention from the investor. At that time, Ripple's investor is IDG uh, Capital. Uh, so it's they share like same same like LP uh, with Excel. Uh, so Excel like every very like uh, prestigious venture uh, uh, fund in United States, and they basically share the same LP with. Uh, Excel uh, in China called IDG Capital. Uh, they re uh, IDG Capital invested uh, Ripple uh, back to uh, 2013, 2014. And then I helped Ripple to build uh, China, uh, Chinese business. And then uh, uh, IDG and Ripple funded me uh, to build um, um, a JV in China to uh, further uh, build um, blockchain protocol uh, in China. So you, you can take more like a repo China, but at that time we have a name called Rebo. So uh, Rebo is like the first blockchain development company uh, uh, we have started. Uh, this is like 2014. Uh, and then uh, 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 we continue to develop uh, blockchain uh, um, and then like we, we, we created Tron in 2017. Uh, so at that time, we are not only doing blockchain because uh, I don't know if you remember like to, back to 2014, 15, 16, those years it's really tough for blockchain industry. Lots of the company uh, didn't survive uh, in, in, in those years. So that's why we also launched like a live streaming business in China. So we actually uh, uh, make lots of the profits from this live streaming business, but we never give up uh, our dream in, in blockchain. So we, we keep using the profit we got from the uh, uh, live streaming business to fund now, our now, business in blockchain. Now, what, yeah. what, what, company, what company is this exactly? I want to be clear. That, what's the one doing the live streaming stuff? Uh, what do you mean? Or at, at the time, like what was that entity? that you were doing the live streaming stuff through? Like what, what was the name of that company? Oh, so our like parents company is called Ray, Raybo. Oh, Our, okay, like, yeah, yeah, so, so this, is, this is under Raybo. And, and, yeah. and during create, Raybo, during Raybo, yeah, we, it sounds like you have some vision. You're like, I wanna build Tron, but yeah. I also wanna stay alive and make money as like exactly. be diligent to my investors. Exactly. Uh, so, so we, sorry, we I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, pay, pay wall first. So uh, English is call me. So uh, paywall. So uh, and then uh, um, right. So we, we got the money to fund it, our company, uh, but we keep it like funding the, our uh, uh, company uh, and of course our uh, blockchain business until like 2017. So 2017, everybody know this is a huge like uh, bull market. 
uh, Bitcoin goes up to almost 20,000, you know, everybody is happy. <laughs> so that that's the time we created Tron. So uh, we have like really uh, take off uh, 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 in, in this industry. So uh, uh, this is 2017. Got it. So I think, thank you for that, by the way, because I actually want to hear that. I, I fully want to understand your story, to be honest. Uh, and, I, and I think for whether you're a student listening or whatever, I, one of the things I always try to get across to people is many people like didn't plan their, their path in life, right? I mean, you say you, you think maybe to be a lawyer and then just yeah. once, one small thing sets a chain of events, right? Now we're sitting here on Zoom talking yeah. at a blockchain conference. Exactly. Um, but okay, so my next question is, is, so you started Tron, obviously like pretty successful. Yeah. So what is, it didn't seem like you're really like, uh, you, it seems like you're in a technology, but maybe not the most hardcore programmer. So like, what do you really pull out? Like, obviously you have a big social presence. You yeah. do things like lunches with Warren Buffett. Like, obviously you're a bit of a marketing genius. Like, where do you think that your role is in the crypto space? Like, obviously you're building Tron the technology, but do you feel like you have a separate role to kind of like spur interest? Yes, definitely. Uh, I think I have like two uh, missions for, for myself uh, in the industry. Uh, first of all, uh, I believe is uh, building the uh, reliable blockchain infrastructure for all the developers. Uh, that's all uh, what we do in like Tron, like BitTorrent, uh, both together, right? So we are more like an infrastructure provider. So for today, like everybody is talking about like layer one solution, public chain solution. So blockchain solution, I think we are like blockchain solution provider. Uh, so we provide the best blockchain solutions to all the developers around the globe, no matter for like DApps or for DeFi. And the uh, BitTorrent of course is a decentralized uh, file sharing protocol and also decentralized storage protocol. Uh, we try to provide the best protocol in our industry. So, uh, so I think that's like first of my goal. Uh, I always try to become the best like uh, infrastructure provider in our industry. And then the second, of course, uh, uh, I want to like apply myself to promote the crypto uh, 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 to the global like uh, 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 like like everywhere basically, right? When, when I first like get into the crypto industry, it's like two thousand and thirteen. There's nobody know about crypto at all. So uh, when I talk to all my relatives, like everybody in China, people never heard of crypto at all. So that's was the time I believe like we really need some good marketing. We really need to bring like everybody uh, uh, know about crypto uh, in the first place. So I think this is two things. First of all, I know lots of the hardcore programmer. They want to explain like how Bitcoin works like how blockchain works, why this is benefits you. But I mean, for the, this, there is like, uh, there are like 7 billion people on earth, yeah. right? For, 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 for grandma, you need to make exactly. it very simple for grandma. Like. Exactly, they, they don't understand about crypto at all. So I think the first thing you need to make sure is they need to heard about crypto in the first place. So, so that's something, right, we have been working on, like also uh, like very hard in the industry. For example, uh, um, lunch with Warren Buffett is definitely one of them, right? We, we make lots of the people like heard about crypto uh, the first time. Uh, I, I can give you a, like, like a very funny example. It's my, my mom's dentist know about crypto because of this. So, uh, so what, 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 what my, mom going to the uh 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 go, going to visit uh her dentist and the dentist uh, asked my mom you you know that i i saw a son like having lunch with Warren Buffett. he's doing crypto stuff you know so that that's why i think this is like something we can really get like everybody know about crypto uh uh for for uh for the first time and of course i think um you see my twitter is also the number one like twitter handle in our industry i got um, more than like two, uh, 2.1 like million followers. So uh, um, that's also something I think is very important. We need to be, need to be very, uh, um, need to be like big, like social media driven, you know, 
uh, because all the uh, millennial, like all the young people, like everybody is on social media. So you need to be very like social media active to attract like everybody uh, into the industry. So I, I also like very active on like all the conference, you know, uh, like, like, like uh, all, all the lectures try to uh, promote like Bitcoin, um, uh, um, like best I can do. So that, that's something I think is also very important in our industry because I think our uh, technology here is way better than the traditional like finance industry. You know, um, blockchain is way better than Swift, uh, than like banking wire uh, we, we are using today. So we need to make sure like everybody heard about us and they, they start to pay attention to us and the more and the more people will get into the industry because of us. Very well said. And I, I can say from my, my side, like for anyone watching this, this guy is hyping crypto. Regardless of whatever you think, like anyone could say that's the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. But unfortunately not everyone's even in that position. So like exactly. just take the Warren Buffett crypto lunch that you don't need to say anything else really. Uh, but appreciate that. Uh, so I want to pivot here a little bit. And I told you, I just got off right before this with Michael Saylor and was talking to him and it was like very interesting. I, I think really, as I understood how they're thinking about like moving cash from their internal balance sheets, right? Like they're not investors, like they're thinking about what they do with their cash, right? How, how are they corporately responsible? And I think you have other elements of the market here and you hit on some, but can you give me the Justin Sun, like state of the crypto union? Like, yeah. obviously we just went through some crazy DeFi stuff. 2020 has been a weird year. Um, you know, it, it may be the, mar the market's on fire the last two weeks, right? We think traditional money is finally kind of landing. But if you were to say like how you view the landscape now, and maybe if you were to look out the next year, what, what would you, what would you say, tell people listening? Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, I think after uh, these like almost eight years uh, development in the blockchain industry, like every crypto had to find their narrative. Um, Bitcoin, of course, is digital gold, right? Everybody will know uh, this narrative. So uh, digital gold, like every institution, uh, is if you want to really escape from um, uh, the inflation, right? Federal Reserve is printing money like every day. If you really want to keep your wealth like uh, intact, uh, you definitely need into like owing crypto, especially uh, Bitcoin. Uh, because Bitcoin is the digital goal. And also uh, uh, Ethereum has find this narrative is more like the, uh, um, the computing platform or uh, we call it like DeFi infrastructure, right? So like Tron, uh, we are positioned ourselves more like the competitor with Ethereum. Uh, our uh, vision is kind of like the same with Ethereum. We are also like a decentralized computing platform uh, you can call it also like a smart contract platform or it's a decentralized financial infrastructure. Uh, but the difference between uh, Tron and Ethereum is Tron offer a high scalability solution compared to the Ethereum. So the transaction on Tron is much faster and cheaper than uh, uh, you have on Ethereum. Uh, you can see these days like Ethereum transaction, each transaction can cost up to like $50. Uh, the cheapest will be like at least one or two dollars. So um, the transaction uh, and of course the transaction speed is also extremely slow. So that's why uh, you see this year like USDT has been migrated to Tron uh, 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 and right now Tron is the largest USDT network in our industry. We have two times transaction numbers compared to Ethereum. We have over 500 transactions per day and Ethereum only have like 20K, uh, two, 200K or something. So we are 2.5 times more than Ethereum. And also recently we just launched like BTC on Tron. So we hope lots of the BTC will also migrate to Tron network. Uh, um, basically this is a, a huge because first of all, you can have like smart contract, uh, easy to interact with uh, uh, other DeFi application, 
decentralized app application with uh, uh, Bitcoin assets. On the other hand, people can move Bitcoin between exchange like very easy based on uh, Bitcoin on Tron. So you can move like Bitcoin very easily. It's just like moving USDT between exchange uh, is free and cheap. Uh, it's free, fast and cheap. So, so that's why uh, uh, um, uh, I believe Tron is more like a, a layer two solution uh, for Bitcoin uh, and the Ethereum. Uh, and we offer like the best scalability in our industry. So I believe uh, with strong support, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDT, and all the major cryptocurrency assets can easily to move from like 200K transaction today to like 20 million transaction per day. It's gonna be like at least 100 times more than before. Uh, for example, like Bitcoin transaction, every day right now we are talking about uh, 200K or something, right? But I believe like Bitcoin move to Tron, we can handle like 20 million or something. Uh, we will make like Bitcoin uh, prosper, uh, more prosper than ever. Got it. Yeah. And, and I want to kind of follow up on this. Like, do you draw any correlations from this year? I mean, like obviously this year was crazy, right? Like COVID happened, the markets drop. I think you mentioned like people printing cash. Yeah. Do you feel like all of those things change this year and like what do you do you think that's an accelerant when you look i don't know how you also i don't know how you measure months do you measure quarters six yeah. months a year like what do you see what do you see coming yeah if you look back to like 2000 early like january 20th that's the time i have lunch with warren buffett um at that time there's like like no kobe right at least the kobe is only in china uh, it's not like spread across the globe. Like most of the people don't know about COVID, COVID uh, but today you, this is like a pandemic. Uh, so it's like, make me feel like this is uh, 10 years ago. If you look back early, like 2020, it's like 10, 10 years ago to me. Uh, but definitely I believe this uh, uh, nine months has been acceleration of like online business and online economy for all the countries. So um, um, for example, like Zoom, right? Everybody is get used to Zoom uh, uh, for now. At that time, I mean, Zoom is only for the startup like us. So I use Zoom even before COVID because I need to like chat about uh, with uh, different employee in different regions. But these days, like everybody moved to Zoom, right? So feel like to me, it's like, uh, cryptocurrency is also um, before COVID is only for uh, like the crypto people like me, right? I do in crypto every day. But after COVID, everybody realized uh, the importance of digital gold, realized the importance of blockchain, uh, realized the importance of the uh, uh, online financial infrastructure because nobody can go into the bank anymore, right? Uh, bank shut down, like lots of business shut down. Lots of people need to stay at home, right? So they really start to, I think, move everything online. So that's like the 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 uh, 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 I I believe this is the acceleration. We also see a huge like adoption of VR, right? Lots of people because they can only stay at home, so they start to play VR. So that's why I, I believe this is also drive lots of traffic uh, into crypto as well. Got it. Appreciate that. Yeah. I think a lot of points I agree with. And, you know, I've been like asking everybody, I mean, many people like, and actually I think everyone kind of has the same feeling, like something changed this year. Right. And, and I think it'll be interesting to see what happens next, but let, let me pivot a little bit. And I think something that you had said earlier, when you were talking about, like, when you guys started the first company and honestly, I, I can't remember or pronounce the name of it, but I think when I when I'm looking, I'm like, okay, this guy bought BitTorrent, he has D Live, right? All this stuff. When when I look at you and I come like I live in San Francisco for many years, like I've been in tech, whatever. By the way, I saw you guys have an office in Howard. If you look at second in Howard, my friend on nightclub temple, but we have I have big Bitcoin sign. Have you ever seen Bitcoin sign there? Uh yeah. call it blockchain center. So yeah. like I think you you kind of migrate to SF a little bit, right? And and you know, some sometimes or split your time. 
So do you think that when I heard you talking about being profitable earlier, I feel like it's one thing that like many crypto companies haven't really thought about. They're like, I'm going to raise all this money and I'm going to take all this, all these years to build this experimental technology, et cetera. So do you feel like you're unique in that fashion? And, and, and what's your like general strategy there? Like, do you kind of see Tron as the, the backbone? And then you see that there's these other entities that kind of serve individual purposes. Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, I can walk through, through you through like some landscape of our company uh, right now. So I think, of course, as you say, like we uh, we always have like one like core business. I think is the uh, blockchain infrastructure. Uh, so uh, and, and further, we expand this concept to like decentralized infrastructure, not just like related to blockchain, but it's more like decentralized infrastructure. Uh, we are like interested in like building all the decentralized infrastructure for all the DeFi and the decentralized application. Uh, I can give you some example, right? Tron is a blockchain solution. So we offer to all the developers if they want to issue their tokens, if they need a blockchain infrastructure, they can build on a Tron platform. Uh, and then uh, we add some like layer on top of the Tron uh, business try to uh, make Tron business uh, even more uh, 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 powerful. For example, we are like DeFi layer, right? We got like just stable is like MakerDAO on Tron. Uh, we got USDJ as a decentralized stable coin. And we have just swap is a decentralized exchange built on Tron platform uh, with AMM solution. And we also have Polonia DAX. We collaborate with Poloniex to build the other book uh, based decentralized exchange on Tron. And we also have like, we're gonna launch like Just Link. It's a chain link on Tron, uh, it's an Oracle platform. As, uh, and then we launch like USDT on Tron, provide uh, the stable coin solution for everyone. So you can see like all the application layer uh, uh, we uh, build on, on the Tron platform, it's all um, just for like offer uh, a, a reliable high scalability uh, blockchain solution for everybody. Um, so, uh, so I think this is kind of like the business, uh, uh, core business. It's just like Amazon, right? So for example, we built this like very powerful uh, e-commerce platform and everybody can come to Amazon to sell their product to their consumers, right? Consume, uh, Amazon itself didn't sell anything, right? So we built the platform uh, for uh, um, basically uh, uh, the consumers, they can buy the product from other people. So the, the, that's also like the same logic of Tron. So we built the platform and everybody can build their token infrastructure uh, application and offer to their customer. So that's, uh, I think the, is the core business Bitcoin is kind of the same. Uh, Bitcoin have been in San Francisco for, yeah, forever, like 17 years. I think Bitcoin is also always trying to focus on building a very robust uh, file sharing and storage uh, protocol for everybody in the industry, right? Like uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, Blizzard, uh, like like even like federal government, like FBI, like everybody is using BitTorrent as a way to transfer files, uh, decentralized because this is more efficiency, uh, more efficient. Uh, they can transfer their files, and also this year uh, we launched like BTFS called BitTorrent file system. It's also a P2P way for people can share their uh, um, uh, files to one another. Uh, um, based on other people's computer encrypted. So that's why I think we have been like always like focus our uh, business uh, on the core business we have been doing here uh, is decentralized uh, uh, infrastructure. And for DLive it's the same. So uh, DLive itself is a live streaming platform available in United States, uh, Brazil and Turkey. Uh, but on the other side, um, DLive, the team is also collaborating with BitTorrent team. Uh, we're trying to launch a live streaming infrastructure for like everybody building live streaming in this industry. So, um, so uh, at this point, I will say uh, we, we are foc always focusing on uh, building 
the best uh, infrastructure uh, technology in our industry. And do you think that kind of that strategy of I have this parent company and then I started to build sub brands underneath it? Do yeah. you think that some of your peers in the space deploy that? And if not, why do you think they not? Why do you think they don't? And do you think that it's something like that people are missing that there needs to be materialized, almost demo applications or demo platforms to really show a use case? Yes, definitely. Um, so I think for uh, uh, our industry, we have like uh, 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 some like very uh, uh, amazing players. Uh, for example, like Ethereum, I think definitely uh, uh, Ethereum has lots of the network effects here because lots of the uh, developers try to build on Ethereum and uh, uh, Ethereum has a very active and a robust community. So, uh, so that's why I think Ethereum has this kind of the network effects. You can see all the application on Ethereum is very robust uh, and uh, uh, everybody loves it. But the only problem for Ethereum, I think, is the scalability problem. Uh, so Ethereum can only consume around like one million transaction uh, per day. So uh, this is like a huge like limitation uh, for Ethereum. And then the second, I think, is it's definitely is strong. So uh, we have a very robust community as well. And uh, as you as you know, like we are building like all the infrastructure, uh, try to provide the best like uh, services uh, for the developers in our industry. And uh, another like player I think is very interesting is Binance. So uh, Binance these days they got like very uh, prestigious exchange. At the same time, they uh, they get into like wallet, right? You know, they have trust wallet. Uh, they also are doing some smart contract platform like called BSC, and they also got like a credit card company uh, called SXP, and also they got like a travel like payment channel called Travala, you know, and uh, yeah, but, uh, and of course, uh, don't forget like CMC, right? CMC is also owned by Binance. I think they are also doing like, like a very uh, uh, different kind of business and they they kind of like succeed uh, in all uh, kind of the business on that. So that's why um, this is, I, I think is two like interesting players uh, I, I have seen in our industry. Well, and, and you kind of bring me to something like I, I was thinking, because I we, we've been lucky I, the last few weeks we've talked or last few conferences we've talked to like every aspect of Binance people, right? And I keep yeah. saying, I'm like, man, like they, they're really building the ecosystem, right? Like, like you said, from credit card to whatever, I was like, where do you guys see yourselves, right? So like, that's kind of how I'm seeing you, I guess, looking from the outside. So I'm gonna ask you a question, like what company, like if you were to pick companies to kind of compare Tron to or that you would say you'd want to model. And, and I think one unique aspect about you guys is that you have an app store, right? One, yeah. one of the most popular apps here is like Tron Bet, whatever. So like, what is your, if you think out, like what does five years look like for you? And do you, do you kind of picture yourself as like an Apple type or like more open or? Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, I think we position ourselves more like Apple. So um, so uh, if you see like uh, Apple, Apple is always building like a very close like ecosystem for themselves, you know? Apple has the iPhone uh, uh, for, uh, for mo mobile device. And also they have MacBook for, uh, uh, for laptop. And then they got like this iOS system for um, and their mobile phone. And they got the same operating system for, uh, for their laptop. And then uh, inside of the uh, system, they got like this kind of the, uh, um, app store uh, and, and then different developers build on their web store. They use Apple's payment and you have iTunes, uh, you have iPod, you know. So basically uh, uh, Apple TV, you know, everything you have here, uh, Apple build out like a very uh, big uh, ecosystem for all the kind of the developers uh, uh, you are trying to get in uh, in the industry. So at the early stage, um, this kind of the business approach might be slow, right? Might be uh, not that efficiency to some of the people because you know you can't make lots of money for building the ecosystem. 
but the ecosystem itself has lots of the network effects. Uh, once the ecosystem has been built, it's going to be like really powerful. Uh, for example, like today, if you are a developer, the only choice for you to build on mobile device is either build on Android or uh, App Store. So that's the only two choices for you uh, because this is the only active ecosystem uh, in the industry. So, so that's why uh, I think uh, that's like uh, uh, when uh, I try to like precision myself, uh, I, I think this is more like Apple. Uh, early this year, I also met with like uh, 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 Apple's founder. Um, uh, and, and also, I, I talk with him. Was was Wozniak, you know? Yeah, yeah, what was? Yeah, exactly. I talk with him. I I, I I met him once at Golden Gate Park, and I I sat there like I don't know if he's sitting with his girlfriend. This is probably eight years ago. This guy has like an old school Game Boy sitting next to some girl where you used to plug in the cable to play yeah. Tetris against each other, and I was like, is that Steve yeah. Wozniak sitting on a bench with the I with a cable between two old school Game Boys? Anyways, he is a nice yeah, exactly. guy, but. So what was when he talked to me, he's also always trying to bring me about like some like new idea he has about like the hardware, you know, how do you like combine things to get together, you know, uh, some like interest like hardware uh, he always have been working on. So so that's why uh, 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 I talk with him. And also uh, um, this is kind of like, uh, me like precision myself, like in the industry. The only difference between the Apple and our uh, ecosystem, I think our ecosystem is more inclusive and less control, you know, uh, because like Apple is like very uh, control, uh, uh, controlling uh, in their ecosystem, right? They can delete like any developers in their ecosystem. It's more like a centralized control model. So I think that's the only difference. We want to be like a permissionless uh, and very decentralized uh, 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 protocol. Uh, compared to what Apple is doing, but also well, well that's yeah. that's that's the battle they fight though. I feel like because it's like like okay, they're like walled garden. We can stop any developers from uploading malware apps. Then yeah. you like can look at Android or Microsoft where you have open thing, but then you have a thousand pieces of hardware where they don't really work exactly the right way. Like exactly, exactly. So that's like if you become like permissionless, they're gonna have lots of the chaos, right? So uh, incompatible and all, also like, like people, it's very easy for people to get hacked if they, uh, uh, if you use like Android devices, right? Uh, and other like malwares, it's very easy to get access to your phone, right? If you use Android. So yeah, definitely, uh, uh, I think this is the disadvantage, but yeah, that's like, I think it's the different approach uh, uh, we take uh, and, and I think this is also the difference between uh, 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 blockchain and the uh, traditional finance infrastructure. Appreciate that. I, I think I think you guys are crushing it. I, I I personally, if I look from the outside, like I I think a lot of people are getting this wrong from the marketing side. Like how to really drive adoption. Like exactly. Like I I I bought a site last year and put it up. Everyone's like, why are you doing this? I Bitcoin for Christmas. Literally yeah. with guides to like teach grandma how to give Bitcoin, right? It's like the things that we need to do are a bit, you know, the technology is clearly not easy to build and it's going to take time, right? If people could speed it up, they would have already sped it up. Like it's, it's not a matter of laziness, I think at this point or dedication of resources. So and I think there are other intersections or acquisitions people need to make that can help kind of bridge gaps. So I know we're about, we only have a few more minutes here. Um, yeah, sure. So you want to you want to do a little bit of a rapid fire with me? Yeah, I'm sure. Gonna go down. Sure. All right, cool. All right. So what's Tron like uh, Cliff Notes? What's Tron's focus in Q4? What are you excited for for the rest of the year? Yeah, sure. I think first of all, definitely it's about our uh, DeFi ecosystem. Uh, we launched just link this week and we're going to launch like just land. It's a decentralized landing platform on Tron very soon. And we're gonna introduce like more uh, 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 regulated st stable coin in Tron ecosystem. Uh, and everybody see like Coinbase custody also add like uh, 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 exploring support of lots of the TRX like assets. Uh, and, and also of course, 
I think this is also a big year for BitTorrent. Uh, we launched like BitTorrent X ecosystem. Uh, we have like uh, DLive decentralized live, live streaming application and the BitTorrent speed and the BTFS available uh, in the BitTorrent ecosystem. And, and also I believe uh, this year gonna be like, like very uh, huge for crypto adoption. Uh, we have seen a huge amount of the traditional uh, institution investor is interested in the Tron ecosystem. I see them like starting to in invest into the Tron ecosystem. So I definitely am very bullish and uh, uh, prom uh, optimistic uh, about uh, uh, Q4. All right, next one. What makes the BitTorrent file system unique? Yeah, first of all, I think, I don't know if you, everybody is using like BitTorrent or uTorrent. So both like clients is built by our team. So this is like a decentralized way uh, to transfer your files uh, between your friends. And right now we're trying to expand this function to uh, storage. So the decentralized storage, the first advantage is nobody except yourself can access to your files. So instead of like storing on Google, Amazon, on Dropbox, like the centralized company, they can access to your files and, and the people who hack your computer to get, can get access to files. Decentralized storage way, only you can access your files with, uh, with encrypted key. And also second is very cheap and fast. So with a P2P of way to transfer the files and, and also the way to storage the files is much cheaper compared to uh, um, like traditional way to store the files. And then the third is, is definitely uh, uh, more, uh, 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 have more uh, resilience uh, compared to the traditional way because your files is breaking to pieces and the encrypted storing other people's computer there's no way uh, you're gonna lose your files because it's gonna be uh, distributed, stored in all different kinds of the computer uh, 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 around the globe. So it's just like Bitcoin, uh, it's safe, uh, cheap, and also decentralized, uh, efficient compared to the traditional uh, uh, system. All right, next one. How do you believe Tron will beat Ethereum in the DeFi race. And how do you think this is gonna unfold in 2021? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I believe uh, Tron targeted Ethereum. We are like high scalability uh, um, provider uh, in this industry. Uh, you know, like Ethereum's high gas fee has prevent a lot of the people from participating in the DeFi in the first place. For example, if you only get like 10K US dollars you, you want to put into DeFi, and the transaction fee is $50 per transaction, right? It's very hard you to put in the money because even deposit and the withdrawal are gonna cost you $100. It's like 1% of all your assets, right? If you, you are, if you are doing liquidity mining or anything, the profit can't even like make, make up for the, for the mining fee. So that's why I think Tron is compatible, is 100% compatible to Ethereum. We definitely provide a best way for all the users. They can just move their application and developers can just move their application to Tron and enjoy like a super scalable and cheap uh, uh, experience and uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, just take like USDT as an example, they move like to Tron uh, um, uh, last year. And today, like the uh, um, Tron uh, already surpassed Ethereum as the biggest uh, um, USDT network in our industry. For anyone watching, this guy is good. Yeah. Last but not least, for the thousands yeah. of students watching this right now, if you, if you were going to school again today, like today in 2020, and obviously, they have a weird time right now. They're not even back at the universities, whatever. And they, some of them that are like in blockchain clubs or whatever, how would you tell them to think about blockchain right now? Yeah, sure, definitely. 
uh, I think even like this is my eight years in this industry uh, and Bitcoin just celebrates the 10 years anniversary. Uh, but I still believe this is like early stage of crypto. So traditional finance industry has been there for hundreds of years, 500, 400 years uh, from now. So I think crypto is going to be the same time. Uh, our history is going to be at least like 500 years. So the first 10 years is still early stage. So every students and uh, uh, everybody enthusiastic about the crypto, you can get into the crypto industry at, uh, as soon as you can. I think like you won't be regretted. Uh, and also the same time I believe is you, you don't need to be like very tech savvy uh, to get into crypto in the first place. Uh, you can participate in all kinds of the community. We have like, you can just like visit Tron dot network, like visit our website, join our like Telegram group, Discord group. You know, if you are a programmer, you can participate in the Hackathon and build the application on Tron platform, check our like uh, uh, devel developer docs. Or if you are not like developers, you can start you using Tron as a way to transfer your money and you can promote this kind of the blocking idea to everybody just like me do, right? I promote this kind of Bitcoin and blocking idea to all the people I know. So I think that's all the things you can do. You can even apply like internship uh, in a blockchain company. So that's like, like a lot of the way uh, you can participate in this industry. Uh, and learn about like the blockchain technology behind like all this. So, so that's why I think definitely you need to uh, seize this opportunity. Amazing. And I always tell people, I'm, I was surprised when we first started working with universities. It's yeah. like the, the which you wouldn't be surprised that like the legal groups that are coming over. They want to learn about law and blockchain or yeah. the MBAs and the business students, like the engineers and, and, I think, I think more people are starting to grasp this. So I know we're running out of time here. Yeah. For anyone watching this, pay attention to what this guy's saying. I, I didn't know what to expect on this interview. I, I, Justin, I'm a fan. I want to try yeah. to, like, like, I think. Uh, any last words before we go? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think definitely uh, blockchain is an opportunity uh, for, uh, for our, like, young generation. So uh, I hope like everybody can like enjoy the ride. Love it. Justin Sun, Patrick McLean, everybody stay tuned. I don't know what point we're here in the 72 hours of this event. Amazing speakers like this are why we're doing it. And Justin, you have a good day, yeah? Thank you.